Well, Claire, you have recorded Lazy Afternoon with Kenny Barron. It's been a top hit. And I think if my mathematics, which I'm not very good at, is reasonably correct, you are one of over 170 people who have recorded Lazy Afternoon. That's something, isn't it? So how did you come across this? Well, when did you come across Lazy Afternoon? How did you discover it? This song I've known, um, A Lazy Afternoon, I've known for many years because it's one of those very hip tunes that whilst wasn't in the great American songbook as such, if you were a jazz singer that was looking for something a little bit outside of the great American songbook and you were listening to really hip singers like Mark Murphy and Betty Carter and um, slightly more edgy left field singers, this song would crop up. And so my first... The first time I, I heard it was, in fact, the Mark Murphy, fantastic version Mark Murphy did. And then by a British singer who is quite peerless singer, pianist called Leanne Carroll. And she recorded it just beautifully. Um, she did it in one take, actually, I've since found out. And um, it always appealed to me for many reasons. I think it's, it conjures up so many wonderful pictures very, very quickly in the singer's head of this, you know, this this sleepy meadow and the speckled trout sleeping it's it's such a visual song it's so easy to sort of get carried away uh, with the song um and singing is you know when you close your eyes or try not to but you're trying to tell the story you're trying to get the listener in with you or to tug on heartstrings or thoughts or feelings and this just seemed like a great song and I've been meaning to do it so doing it with Kenny Barron was a absolute double whammy for me um and getting that great kind of jazz um, three uh, waltz time arrangement that I've got on it. I was I was very pleased with this, and I chose I thought a good key for my voice is nice and sort of low, and hopefully I'm not sounding too lazy, but I'm sounding pre pretty relaxed as I'm singing it. Yes. Now, listening to your performance of this did intrigue me. There are many performances that have been recorded that I don't care for because they they don't seem to capture to me the essence of this remarkable song. Um, I'm not saying that one wants it to sound exactly as it did originally in 1954. It couldn't do that. But to me, the most important aspect is that it expresses an element of longing. And this can be done in different ways. And what I found interesting in your performance was, although the style is very different from how it was originally heard in 1954 with Kay Ballard and the original orchestration, but it does seem to me to express a feeling of intense longing. I, I felt that that feeling of desire uh, is very strongly there in your performance. And so in that respect, I feel you have actually captured much of the essence of what Jerome Ross was composing. Mm. That's very, very kind of you to say that, John. I mean, I guess the lyric, I mean, there are a couple of kind of little clues in the lyric, you know, um, if you take my hand, you know, there's no sort of setup at the end where they do have this lovely day. She's kind of saying, you know, we we could hear that if if you take my hand and it it's not sort of um, a given that that is ever going to happen together, is it? Really, that she is quite sort of um, uh, yeah yeah. That's I've never thought of it like that. Really, I guess. Well, that's very sweet of you to to say that. But it's I, I guess as well that kind of modal thing we've given it on the outro is um, I think it's taken it into a sort of more modern. Uh, s sound as well. It's not sort of kept it quite simple. We've stretched it a bit um, and given it that few little sort of figures, um, da -do -de -da -da, you know, that we thought of to sort of pepper it if, if you want. So um, I tried to make it my own. I really did. Yes, of course. Of course you've made it your own and it's very different from the original 1954 performance. Uh, it, it must be. But I do feel that you've understood the, the essence. The poetry is there. And um, I, I say again this word, I've said it perhaps too many times, but longing and desire. Yes, of course, it's more restless. We are in the 21st century. So it has that angst, if you like. The anxiousness is more to the fore. But I think that the tone colours in your voice and your interpretation and your understanding of the words and how the words relate to the music, I think you've understood that this is not a simple 
easygoing, lazy afternoon. That's the point. An awful lot of people have interpreted it like that in a rather light-hearted way. No, your performance is not light-hearted. It's, it's quite um, almost a little bit disturbing in certain respects, and I think that's appropriate. God, I'm very flattered. That's very kind to hear. You should hear Leanne Carroll's version as well. If you can, try and track it down. She did a great, just I think it was just her and keyboards, and um, it's beautiful, really beautiful. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a it's, a, it's a lovely sing. It's a really nice sort of shape. Um, it's it's just, as I said, it's so descriptive. Um, yeah, and it's not overdone. It's still retained that kind of, you know, if you, you know, if you really can hack it, you can have a go at Lazy Afternoon, because it's, especially in a sort of faster, because sometimes and Leanne Carroll and other people have done it very slowly. So I just tried to give it a little bit of oomph by chugging it along a bit into a waltz tempo. But no, I loved it. And I'm including it in my set. In fact, I'm going to New York next week and I'll be doing it out there with some great American musicians. And I'll uh, I'll make a bit more of a meal of the introduction now I've talked to you. Oh, well, I'm glad that I've maybe contributed a tiny little bit from myself. But it's all by way of saying, isn't it, that this marvellous composer, Jerome Moross, has expressed music that can live on through a long period of time and sound different in so many ways, but if it has an artist who maintains and preserves the original real truth and sentiment, then it can be performed in different ways and yet sound truthful. And I think that's the important point. So, Claire Martin, thank you very, very much indeed for joining us for this centenary tribute to Jerome Moross. And I hope that we can talk again soon, and I'll certainly be seeing your upcoming performances, I think uh, they're available on your website, yeah? Look me up online. I certainly will. Thank you very much indeed, Claire Martin. Bye-bye.